Good morning children. Today we shall learn about the digestion in humans in detail. We already know the complex food that we eat gets turned into simpler substances through the process of digestion. But how do various complex substances turn into simpler substances? Well, it is through a chemical change. The complex food turns into simple substances that is the complex molecule breaks down and new substances are formed. Who makes this chemical change into the food? Let us understand the digestion process in detail for this. When the food passes through the digestive tract, different chemicals react with food particles and simpler molecules are formed. The different organs of the digestive tract secrete that is release a liquid containing these chemicals and we call that liquid the digestive juice as they carry out the digestion by breaking down the foods. The digestive juice contains a type of chemical called enzyme which breaks down the complex molecule into simple molecules. Now what is produced in the digestion? The different nutrients like the carbohydrate, protein, fats are the different chemicals. The different nutrients take part in the reaction with different chemicals. So they are broken down into different simpler substances. For example, the carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. The proteins are broken down in simpler amino acids. The fats are broken down into fatty acid and glycerol. Now where do these reactions take place? In the digestive tract that starts with the mouth and ends at the anus. The digestive tract is also called the elementary canal. So let us start from the beginning. When we chew the food, it gets mixed with saliva which we commonly call the spit. The salivary glands release saliva in the mouth. Is saliva important? Yes, it is. The saliva contains the enzyme which helps in breaking down starch which is one kind of carbohydrate into sugar. Not just that, the saliva also makes the food slimy so that it can pass through the food pipe or the esophagus easily. From the mouth, the food travels through the long pipe-like esophagus and reaches the stomach. How does the food reach the stomach from the esophagus? The wall of the esophagus contracts and then relaxes to produce a wave-like movement which pushes the food down towards the stomach. Now the food is in the stomach. The stomach is a thick walled bag. As you can see, its shape is like a flattened U. It receives the food from the food pipe at one end and it opens into the small intestine at the other end. You know the inner walls of the stomach secrete that is they release hydrochloric acid which kills the microbes in the food and makes the food ready for digestion by making it acidic. The stomach releases an acid then why doesn't it affect our stomach? Well the inner lining of the stomach secretes mucus which protects the lining of the stomach from the acid. Understood? The inner walls also secrete digestive juice which help in the digestion of protein and fat. But the food doesn't get completely digested in the stomach. The partially digested food from the stomach moves into the small intestine. This partially digested food is called chyme. 
then the digestive juices in the small intestine starts to break down the food now you may have heard that the healthy liver is important for good digestion but the food doesn't go through the liver then how does it helps in digestion the liver secretes a chemical called bile juice which helps in the digestion of fat the liver is a reddish brown gland situated in the upper part of the abdomen on the right side it is the largest gland in the body the bile juice secreted by it is stored in a sac called the gall bladder the juice is then released into the small intestine there is another gland which helps in the digestion by secreting the digestive juice it is the pancreas the pancreas is a large cream colored gland located just below the stomach the pancreatic juice acts on the carbohydrates and the proteins and changes them into the simpler forms the pancreatic juice is also released into the small intestine the bile juice and the pancreatic juice reach the intestine through the small pipe like path this intestinal juice and the pancreatic juice contain the required enzymes to break down the carbohydrates protein and the fats hence the digestion gets completed inside the small intestine so finally the carbohydrates turn into glucose proteins turn into amino acid fats turn into fatty acid and glycerol still the digested nutrients are inside the small intestine only how does it reach other parts of the body and cell you know the nutrient gets absorbed by the small intestine walls which are full of blood vessels the inner wall of the small intestine has small finger like projections called villi each villus has many blood vessels you may ask why is the structure of the villus finger like because of the finger like structure the surface area of the wall increases hence there can be more blood vessels and more absorption of food correct so the villi absorb the liquid digested food and the food enters the blood vessels in the villi after the absorption of digested food the undigested food moves into the large intestine the large intestine absorbs the water from it as the water is precious after the absorption of water the undigested food becomes semi solid and gets stored in a sac like part at the end of the large intestine which is called rectum this undigested semi liquid food is called the feces or the stool the fecal matter is removed through the anus from time to time so now you know which all organs form the digestive tract or the alimentary canal the mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine along with the rectum and the anus form the digestive tract so the digestive tract and the associated glands the liver and the pancreas together constitute the digestive system so now you know what is the digestive system in the human that is all for now bye bye children